Hi everyone, this one series is in desperate need of an upgrade because of two things. Number one, the LCD on the stock stereo is broken. And two, I want Apple CarPlay or Android Auto so I can stream music and have built-in GPS navigation on this car. Welcome to part two of my BMW 1 Series head unit upgrade. If you haven't seen part one and you're interested to find out more details about the Android head unit I bought for this car, Make sure to check the link to that video in the description section down below. Usually the second part of my head unit upgrade series is where I get my hands dirty while I do the installation. But unfortunately for this one, I actually sold the car sooner than expected, so I wasn't able to reshoot some of the videos towards the end of the process. So in place of these detailed video instructions, I'll share with you instead a few tips that you might find useful if you want to embark on a similar project like this. And of course, towards the end of this video, I'll give this project a DIY ability score. So you just saw me remove the aircon control panel just then, and now I'm removing the dashboard top trim. Now this removal sequence might work for this car, but I think there's a better way. But before I show you how that's done, let me just show you the two types of E87 dashboards. The first type is the one you see here. Notice how the side trim around the stereo, which I've marked with red lines here, joins into the glove box on one side and the steering column on the other. If your 1 Series dashboard looks like this, then feel free to follow the removal sequence as demonstrated earlier in the video. But if your 1 Series dashboard is similar to this photo, notice there's a break in the panel as pointed out by the red lines here, then there's another way. And the reason I tried to find a different way is because I find it difficult to pry the aircon control out, especially the first time I did it. I think I broke a few clips that hold the aircon faceplate while I was working on this project. And these clips are very tiny and there's no way to glue it back together if you break them. So in this alternative approach, if your 1 Series dashboard looked like the second photo, the first trim you remove is the dashboard top trim. Once removed, you'll see two T20 torque screws. Remove these two screws. At this point, the only thing holding the side panel in place are the clips on either side. And all you need to do is pull it up gently. Here in this video, you can see the location of the clips on the side for your reference. So now the stereo and aircon control panel are now fully exposed. The next step is to remove the aircon control panel. It's held in place by two clips on either side. To remove, gently pull it out towards you, then disconnect the two wires at the back as you saw earlier. You should now see two T20 torque screws just below the stereo. Unscrew them, then gently pull the stereo out towards you. Next, disconnect the wiring harness and antenna wire connected at the back of the stereo. Just be careful when disconnecting the antenna wire because it's held by a small but delicate clip. If you break it, it's not the end of the world, but still will be good to be able to put this back the way it is originally. Now this is the part of the process where I don't have the correct video clips. But I've prepared some graphics to illustrate how to hook up the head unit to the car. The first quad lock wiring harness I bought came bundled with a stereo faceplate and antenna adapter. I thought this was a good deal at the time, but it turns out the pinout on the wiring harness is incorrect. This was after numerous emails to the joint tech support. There was a lot of toing and froing. They asked you to test this and test that. It was very frustrating and I'm left with a head unit that's not working as you can see here. So I had to buy another quad lock wiring harness. This time it came together with a CAN bus decoder for the steering wheel control and the supplier selling this seems to be a reputable one. And as expected this wiring harness did its job and world order has been restored. I'll put the links to all the parts I used for this upgrade in the description section of this video so you guys can use that as reference. And now I'm gonna give this project a DIY ability score. This is the part where I rate the work I've done by judging it across five categories. And each category gets a weighted score between one to 10, one being the lowest and 10 being the highest. So a maximum score any of my DIY project can get is 50. Starting with affordability, I've looked at head unit options for this car and one of my requirement is um, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. 
Price range for these types of head units range from $300 to $700, with this one costing me around $550. So this project gets a 5 out of 10. Moving on to the quality category, the build quality of this Android head unit is okay. But I think not much thought was put into the design how the screen attaches to the main body of the head unit. However, the company's after-sales support is surprisingly good, so that lifted the score of this project a bit. So I'm giving this project a 7 out of 10 in this category. Next category is Satisfaction. I'm happy with the overall outcome of this project because I achieved what I intended to accomplish, which is to modernize the entertainment system of this car. But the amount of effort I expended to get the job done was too much, so ultimately that was a downer. So I'm giving this project a 6 out of 10 in this category. Next is fit and finish. I was let down by the gap I can see around where the screen is connected to the head unit. I painted the plastic surrounds that I can paint, but there are still bits of bare metal visible. I'm giving this project a 4 out of 10 in this category. And last but not the least, fun factor. I learned a lot in this project, but I equally encountered a lot of issues to negate all that, starting with having the wrong wiring harness, exposed metal bits, not enough space behind the head unit to tuck all the wires, and I actually did a lot of rewiring. It was fun, but equally challenging, so I'm giving this project 5 out of 10. Giving this project a total DIYability score of 26.5 which comes second to the X5 head unit upgrade project. And thank you for watching. That's everything I have for you in this video. Make sure to tune in next time to watch my next head unit upgrade on the Peugeot 308. If you find this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And finally, please consider subscribing to this channel and hit that notification icon so you don't miss any of my updates.